I just wanted to make this quick video today to talk about this deck, which I had pre-ordered and has now arrived um, just in time for Christmas. So I'm excited about that. I didn't hook up a microphone or anything for this video. Um, it's basically just an unboxing video for the deck created by this artist, Daniel Martin Diaz. I believe this artist is local to Arizona. Um, and I am living in LA now. So I can only assume that if you ordered one and you live further away, it'll be arriving soon. And if you haven't ordered one, um, I think they are still available, but I'm not sure. Um, I did get to peek at the deck um, before because my roommate works at Wacko and Diaz works with them and worked with them on a show for this deck. Um, <laughs> Don't use your teeth to open stuff. One thing I like especially is that the deck is a really good size. It's big, but it's not enormous. Like a lot of tarot decks are too tall for my little baby hands. <laughs> I have a 12 year old daughter and her hands are getting to where they're bigger than mine. <laughs> Um, so we do have these really beautiful cards and they have this design on the back and there's this Prentice card and the designs, I really love them. Um, it's kind of based on a Lotteria deck if you are familiar with that at all. Um, and you can play the game of Lotteria with this deck if you would like to. And the designs are, these are a very, like, it's kind of like Lenormand style. Um, or if you do use the Lotteria to divine, um, it's a lot like that. Just very simple designs. Not um, not too complicated. They have the names on there. And I think there is a book if you want to have different meanings told to you. I'm to a point now with cardamancy where um, if it doesn't come with a book, I kind of don't bother. I like to kind of just bond with the deck and figure out what I think the cards mean, what meanings they, because really you're going to be the one reading them. So it's tapping into that part of your subconscious it's not, you know, like, this one's really good. This card right here. It's not like just because you've been told one thing that that'll be what that card means for you necessarily, too. I've found in a lot of cases that the traditional tarot meanings don't really have a lot of bearing in my life. And then one thing that's really cool is that for the last 
like, what is this? It's about nine cards. Um, Eight cards. There's like these cycles of the moon uh, that it goes through toward the end of the deck, and I really, really like how that was done. Um, you could, of course, like spread out the cards the way that you want to have them spread out too. Like you don't have to stick to the order. There is significance to numbers, of course, but like if I were using these cards and I shuffled and I started finding like different phases of the moon in the different parts of the deck, you could use that kind of like as a grand tableau type spread if you wanted to. Um, be like, oh, this phase of the moon, um, start looking out maybe for these different things to happen, stuff like that. There's some, like, repetition of ideas throughout the deck. Like, this card is divining, and then this card is divination. But um, I feel like it was, it's been handled really well. And you have, like, different organs and, like, different body parts kind of spread out through the deck and just some there's insects there's transformational work um so i really like how this was put together and i haven't been in communication with the artist but i do check out his website every once in a while and um yeah there's some really cool stuff going on in here there's the elements cards let's see there's this earth water air and fire are all kind of grouped together so another thing you could do is like pull these out pull the um the moon phases out um and use those to like set up your spread and then pull cards to like uh, clarify. We've got all kinds of different really good stuff in here and a lot of the cards kind of like echo each other in really good ways. Like we've got the swarm and then we also have war. And really just like good complex imagery without being overly wrought like not too complicated. And then we have this one that echoes back to a few of the different cards earlier in the deck, like this card and this card all kind of pulled into the Psyche card. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I guess I could do like a really in-depth analysis of the deck if I wanted to for you on video today, but um, it would probably be more beneficial if you were to obtain it or go on the website and look at the images and see if it's something that resonates with you. Um, but I, I don't know if I'll use this because I'm about to record the, um, I'll record January 1st. And then for each of the signs, after immediately after I record the January reading, I'm going to record a um, 2019 forecast. So I probably won't use this deck for January just because I want to make sure that what I end up doing um, is going to resonate and... I want to use cards that I'm much more familiar with just for like such an intensive reading, but I'll probably use it for the monthlies coming up for like early spring, which of course in California, early spring is what, February? <laughs> yeah. Um, so look for this deck to be used in my readings. 
sometime soon. I'm really happy with it and um, definitely check it out if you like divination decks. I love reading cards. I feel like I could almost read any kind of card and tell somebody's fortune at this point. But it really just depends on what the person wants to know. And really, when you start getting deeper into divination, too, and this will be my final thought, uh, just that cold reading is so much of divination when you're working for other people. Um, when you're working for yourself, it's very difficult to use cold reading just because obviously you already have that information. You're privy to it. So either uh, your judgment is colored so you ignore certain things or um, you just don't know it. But when you're cold reading other people, sometimes you can really just tell by looking at them what certain things were going to be for them in the future. Like, what am I going to find true love, for example? Look at the person's lifestyle. Look at uh, the energy that they're putting out there. If they're putting out, like, this uh, scarcity energy, it's very difficult to find, like, a true romance partner. Even the question itself, am, am I going to find love, is kind of rooted in this insecurity of not feeling like you're complete on your own. And I think all of us <laughs> have heard enough pop psychology to know that um, really in order to find a lasting partner, you kind of have to like have that already somewhere within yourself. And when you find it, then you're able to find a true and lasting partnership with somebody else. And it's not for everybody. You can spend a lot of time miserable in, a, in the wrong relationships just because you're afraid to be alone. So don't be afraid to just be by yourself or have serial monogamous relationships that bring you fulfillment. And then when they don't, don't try to hang on to that. But anyway, so... It's my soapbox. <laughs> this is my soapbox moment for this Enigma unboxing video. Um, but yeah, I love this deck. It was put out by Liz De Jesus Press, which is the gallery uh, based out of Wacko Soap uh, down in Hollywood. Um, and my roommate works there, and it's a cool store. So. Maybe they'll have, I bet they have copies of these down there now. So if you're in LA, you can buy the Um But you can also go through the artist's website 